Hey church, this is Jacob. Thank you so much for being there this weekend for those of you who were. For those of you who weren't, I want to encourage you to go back and check out the video on our YouTube channel of the, of the sermon. We closed out our series called I Choose, and this last one was I Choose the Important Over the Urgent, and we looked at a story from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Uh, and in this story, it's Jesus coming to this woman's house, and her name is Martha, and she has a sister named Mary. And in verse 39, it says that Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his teaching. But Martha, in verse 40, is distracted with much serving. She's working hard. She's trying to prepare a meal. She's trying to serve everyone. And she gets super frustrated with her sister Mary for not helping her because Mary was listening to Jesus rather than serving and working. And I think this story really illustrates for us the the, the tension there between the urgent versus the important. I mean, imagine if Jesus came to your house uh, and was sitting with you. I would hope that you, and, and like I would, I hope that we would sit and listen um, and not be distracted with much. But that doesn't just apply if Jesus was literally in our house. That applies to our everyday life. We get distracted with much rather than being able to sit and listen to Jesus and choose what's important. And so we took that concept of choosing important versus the urgent and we talked about what that actually means. And when we're talking about the urgent things, we're referring to the things that are saying, hey, look at me, work on me, do this, people calling us all the time, and, and responding to those. And, and we talked about the important are the things that really need our attention, but yet we're not really gonna affect us until later. Um, these are the things that, that really matter, though. The important things are things like maybe your marriage or your kids or whatever it might be, spending time with, with God, it could be any of those things. And the urgent things are the things like, you gotta do the dishes, you gotta, you gotta do the chores around the house, someone called you and wants to meet, someone's coming over, and it's all these different things that aren't necessarily what falls into what is important, but they are urgent. And unfortunately, most of us never take action on the things that are most important to us until they move to the category of urgent. This happens like when your marriage is important to you, but you don't actually strengthen your marriage until it's falling apart or you don't disciple your kids until they're about to leave home and so it moves from important to something that's urgent to do. The problem is when something that's important moves to the urgent category, we don't have the adequate time or generally the adequate resources to do what's necessary for that important thing. And so we looked at that, um, that story and that's what we drew out of it. And then what we talked about is things that we should do moving forward and things that I would encourage you to do this week is first you have to determine what you value. And the only way for you to know what's important to you versus what's urgent is to actually know what's important. And so determine your values. What do you value? Once you've determined your values, the next thing is to schedule the values. Put them on a calendar, on a general schedule. That way you know what you're doing on this day because you are you have what is important to you on your schedule. When we said on Sunday, What's important to you will never show up on your schedule until it moves to the urgent category. And so we're gonna put those on a schedule. Another thing that I encourage you to do is to look at time and put it in perspective. We, we took a, a simple exercise and we took 168 hours that is in a week and we subtracted everything that we do and tried to see how much time was left over afterwards. I'm guessing if you do it, just like me, you'll be convicted about how much time you have left at the end of the week after doing the things that are necessary. What generally fills up the rest of that time? The urgent. And so I wanna encourage you to do that. So first we gotta determine what we value. Then we've gotta schedule it on a basic schedule. The third thing we've gotta do is create a to-don't list. And these are the things that you are not going to do during the time that you have scheduled the things that are important. This may be not checking your phone when your kids get home and not being on your phone the whole time or numbing out on TV. It's determining beforehand, rather than in the moment, what you won't do. And then lastly, we're gonna be ruthlessly selective with our yes, which means we're not gonna say yes to everything. We're also going to say no to some things. One of the things we talked about was that every time you say no, you also are empowering yourself to say yes to something else. And in the same way, every time you say yes to something, you're taking away your opportunity to say no to that thing and you're saying no to something else. And so what that might look like for you is if you've determined for yourself that you're gonna spend time with God in the mornings, and an urgent thing comes up. Someone wants to meet with you. They haven't seen you in a while. Hey, I've got some free time for breakfast. Well, you want to come and meet. Well, if you've already determined on your schedule that you're going to spend that time with God that they're asking you to meet, the moment you say yes to them, what have you also said to God? 
you've also said no to him. And so learning to not just say yes to everything, but learning to say no and understanding that every no you give is a yes to something else and every yes you give is a no to something else. So that was the sermon this weekend. I hope that you will take those practical steps, apply them, and actually put them into practice for yourself. Don't, don't just listen to those and think, oh, that's a good idea. Do that. Take some time, sit down in the quiet, and work through those things.